Apostle Joshua Selman. Apostle Joshua Selman Niba, an anointed minister of the gospel with a strong apostolic unction. He is the founder of Eternity Network International, ENI, an apostolic ministry with a mandate to replicate the fullness of God's life on the earth. His ministry has grown in leaps and bounds, reaching thousands across the globe. His deep insight into God's word comes from a place of revelation, having encountered Jesus and the Apostle Paul at different times in the course of his ministry. He is the host of Koinonia, a weekly apostolic, prophetic, and evangelistic meeting that hosts passionate believers from all over Zaria and other parts of Nigeria. Global Impact Family, please let's make welcome Apostle Joshua Selman to Recharge Conference 2021. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. While standing, I'd like us to very quickly appreciate and honor the angel over this house, Pastor Yemi David and his lovely wife. Celebrate them. Please do well to also celebrate every man, every woman of God in this place. I honor you sincerely. Thank you. Hallelujah. I have a few minutes this morning to just charge our hearts. Um, and it truly is an honor to be here. Amazed to see what God can do. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? You're the name above every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change? Jesus, you are able, great and mighty God, you are able, Jesus. Hallelujah. Help us this morning, Father, and I pray in the name of Jesus that your word will come to build, to lift, to bless in Jesus' name. Jeremiah 30 and verse 19. Please be seated. Pastor Yemi Davids, thank you again. I truly love you and I'm honored to be here. Thank you, sir. Jeremiah 30 and verse 19. Just a quick charge to bless our hearts. Jeremiah chapter 30 and then verse 19. It says, and out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of those that make merry. Is someone saying amen? amen. I will multiply them. Amen. King James, please, KJV. It says, and they shall not be few. I will glorify them, it says, and they shall not be small. Hallelujah. Multiplication is part of God's commission as far as the dominion mandate is concerned. In, in the details of the dominion mandate as we have in Genesis 1 and verse 28. Genesis 1 verse 28, the Bible says, and God blessed them and mandated us to have dominion. And he described the entire scope of man's reach. And then the character and the nature of that dominion. Here's what he says. God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, every living thing that moved upon the earth. So multiplication is part of the mandate. The mandate for dominion requires that everything God gives you multiplies. Are we together? 
it is consistent with God's character that every time he gives to man, whatever it is that he gives to man comes in the form of a seed. You will seldom have God give people harvests as the first instance of his giving. He would give a seed alongside the grace and the wisdom for multiplication. You have to understand this. It is a seed and then the grace and the wisdom for multiplication. Now, every time God blesses men with seeds, can come as wisdom, graces, creativity. It doesn't matter what expression. Seed just means the beginning and the foundation. Are we together? The life-giving factor of anything is a seed. Now, he does not expect that seed to remain at that level. In, Gen in Matthew chapter 25, for the sake of time, remember, he speaks about the parable of the talents that he gave unto one five, he gave unto one two talents, he gave unto one one. And then the Bible says the one with five went and traded it and then he brought back ten talents, five more. The one with two traded it, brought back two talents more. And then the one who had a single talent, you can see that the giver was just in his allocation because the end of the story shows his wisdom. The one with the one talent, full of offense and full of laziness and complacency, when stewardship was demanded of them, here's what he says, I know you are a hard man. You like to reap where you do not sow. And so, I buried your talent and here's your one talent and give to you and... The owner of the talent called him a wicked, number one, and number two, unprofitable servant. Something is wrong every time God blesses us and we remain at that level and we do not multiply what he's given us. If he gives us seed as wisdom, as grace, as power, he expects that we multiply it. Is God blessing someone? That means nothing should remain at the same level in your hands. And whatever makes things to remain at the same level, in the name of Jesus, we command it to live your life now. I should not come and find you at the same level at any point in your life. The Bible says it this way, the path of the just is as a shining light. Are we Bible students? That shines ever brighter onto the perfect day. You should never be found at the same level, spiritually, intellectually, financially, in your influence, your capacity to understand. It should never be at the same level. The grace and the instinct for multiplication. To multiply means to increase exponentially. To increase exponentially. Greater levels of the same results. Are we blessed? Scripture is full of God's promises as far as multiplication is concerned. Let's run through a few of them. Genesis 22 and verse 17. The Lord there was speaking to Abraham. Genesis 22, 17. Speaking to Abraham about multiplication. Genesis 22 and verse 17. We'll just walk very quickly because of time. You can just write it down. And then Genesis 26. Genesis 22, 17. Genesis 26 and verse 4. This is God speaking to Isaac now about multiplication. In Genesis 28 and verse 3, Isaac is speaking to Jacob. And in the blessing, multiplication is captured. I'm just showing you instances in scripture. From Abraham to Isaac to Jacob in Genesis 35 and verse 11. Apologize, I'm rushing just to maximize time. Genesis 35 and verse 11. Also an expression of the blessing. And lastly, Genesis 48 and verse 4. Among many other scriptures. 22, 17 Genesis, 26 verse 4, 28 verse 3, 35 verse 11, 48 verse 4. All of these scriptures in communicating the blessing have in them 
the dimension of multiplication that means if the blessing is truly upon you among the many things it should produce is multiplication exponential increase at every level if you're with me say amen, amen. now but my my charge this morning is not really over the subject of multiplication but then a word of caution in genesis 18 deuteronomy 18 i meant to say there seems to be as revealed from that scripture a weakness please pay attention there seems to be a weakness and a limitation in all men when we experience increase when we experience abundance when we experience notable achievements ease breakthroughs etc that every time men seem to advance notably in their lives there is a weakness that that state of prosperity creates genesis 18 1. be patient whilst we read and then we'll observe two words of caution and that becomes my charge this morning in as much as it is in our mandate to multiply to increase to advance to move from one level of triumph to another like we're gathered here to celebrate this massive work of faith there is a word of caution that comes to us from scripture deuteronomy 18 and verse 1 let's start from verse 2 deuteronomy chapter 8 did i say 18 please deuteronomy 8 i beg your pardon deuteronomy 8 Thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years. Be patient and please pay attention. In the wilderness to humble you, to prove you, to know what was in your heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commands or not. You know what he's saying here? Do not waste your pain and do not waste your history. That your history is an anchor that will keep you when you rise no matter what it is that you've gone through in life god is saying in his economy nothing is a waste that you must archive your pain your disappointments your frustrations they become the anchor that strengthen you in the presence of greatness there is a side effect to greatness without a history it does not bring sustainability of that result are we following verse 2 thou shall okay let's go to verse 3 for sake of time we're reading down to uh, let's say 18 and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knowest not neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the lord doth man live verse 4 it says thy raiment works not old upon thee neither did thy foot swell these 40 years thou shalt also consider in thy heart that as a man chasteneth his son so the lord thy god chasteneth thee therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the lord thy god to walk in his ways and to fear him for the lord thy god bringeth thee into a good land somebody say good land it is god that brings men into a good land a land of brooks of water of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills what a land a land of wheat barley vines fig trees pomegranates a land of oil olive and honey it says a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness say amen, amen. thou shalt not lack anything in it a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills thou may dig brass when thou hast eaten aha this is where the problem starts when thou hast eaten and art full and then thou shalt bless the lord thy god for the good land which he had given you 11 now is where the caution starts beware someone say beware beware that thou forget not the lord thy god in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which i command you this day 
lest when thou hast eaten and have full, there's something satisfaction does to men. Satisfaction seems to have an ability to erode the memory of God's consciousness and God's faithfulness. He's giving a word of caution here. Usually hunger seems to drive men to remember that there is a God in heaven. But when you are full and you are excelling, when everything begins to multiply in your life and testimonies, prayer points become testimonies. It says, less when thou art eaten and a fool, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein. We're almost done. And when your herd and your flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and thou and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up. And thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from a house of bondage, who led you through that great and terrible wilderness. Are we still here? Wherein were fiery serpents, scorpions, and drought, where there was no water, who brought thee forth water from out of the rock of Flint. 16. Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he may humble thee, and that he may prove thee to do thee good at thy later end. Verse 17. And thou shalt say in thy heart, My power and the might of my hand has done me this. And then verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power, to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day two words of caution the bible gives us in the presence of plenty in the presence of increase in the presence of abundance in the presence of results that let it be that when these things begin to happen to you when your prayer requests have become your testimonies when men begin to celebrate your achievements and you begin to make notable advancements number one the first word of caution is do not forget to keep his commandments his judgments his statutes do not forget to keep his commandments his judgments his statutes you find that in verse 11 this is the first side effect that happens to men in the presence of results. Do not believe anyone who tells you results do not have an effect on you. No. Genuine, notable, ever increasing results. It doesn't just have an effect on those who listen or follow or participate, your audience. Even you, the one who God has used to produce the results, your own results can destroy you. The first thing results can do is to make you change the formula that brought you there. The first side effect is that usually you will find no need again to obtain grace and discipline to walk in keeping with the results that brought you there. There's no pressure. Every point to be proven has been proven. Complacency is the danger that happens when you are at the place of success. And so he says, do not change the principles. If prayer brought you here, keep praying. If fasting brought you here, keep fasting. If the study of the word brought you here, if character brought you here, do not tamper with the formula. Are we together? Most times, people do not last because they stop doing what brought them to the place of greatness. No prayer again. No fasting again, no passion for souls again, no passion for everything. Listen, whatever brings you to the table of greatness is what sustains you while you are there. You must obtain grace. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Do not just enjoy success, study it. Study the process and the pathway. Let me tell you this, the greatest part of success is not the result. Is the person you become when you get there. Your becoming is more important than your obtaining. You have to know this. There is a version of you that you need to evolve to, to be successful. And when you have evolved to that version, stay there and keep moving. Are we blessed this morning? 
It's the reason why, sadly and respectfully speaking, we have a lot of balloon success. People go up today and the next tomorrow they just evaporate. A business thrives today and you find out that all kinds of compromises, bending the standards that brought them to excellence. You must make up your mind. Let this be a word of caution from scripture. Every time you begin to rise, a champion is the one who has something to protect. A failure has nothing to lose. He's already a failure. So the higher you rise, the more you must pay attention to the principles that kept you there. Peg them like pillars and anchors around your life. Surround your life with them like chariots and they will keep you moving. That 10, 20, 30 years after now, you are still standing, moving in ever increasing glory. If you're with me, say amen. amen. So the first caution has to do with abiding the discipline to keep the principles that have kept you afloat, the principles that have kept you in the position of influence, greatness, prosperity, anointing, whatever it is, you must obtain grace to walk in keeping with that principle. Caution number two is found in verse 17. Please give it to us. The second caution for this charge this morning is found in verse 17 deuteronomy 8 17. it says and thou say in your heart the heart has a voice it can speak my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this wealth please look up let me share with you something. You see, in this kingdom, owners are rebels. We don't own things in this kingdom. We are given stewardship of everything. The prodigal son was a steward, but he wanted ownership. Stewardship means you have access under the supervision of an authority. Ownership is in your name and let it be within your control. Lack and danger and depletion starts every time there is ownership consciousness. You may freely eat of the tree, but it's not your own. The Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Are we together? Yes. We live in a world where generally because of a background, especially our dear continent of Africa, we come largely from a background that is full of um, deprivation of all sorts, so when we achieve results like this and the eyes of the world is on us, usually the temptation is to attempt to use subliminal ways to let the people and drum it in the minds of people that this is a product of my wisdom, this is a product of my intellect, this is a product of my results. Most times you find a lot of arrogance. This is what the Bible calls the pride of life. Are we together now? The pride of life. Listen, the pride of life is different from pride. The pride of life is the self-glorification that is derived in the presence of obvious achievements. If you don't have results, you cannot have the pride of life. You can have pride, but not the pride of life. The pride of life is on the strength of obvious achievements, obvious results. Are we blessed? So he leaves us with two words of caution. Never credit the Lord's doing to your wisdom, to your intellect, and to your power. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, trust in the Lord. Please say it after me. Trust in the Lord. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Then it says, lean not on your own understanding. It acknowledges that you have understanding. But it says, lean not on your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. So when the Bible says, thou shalt remember the Lord, he does not mean thou shalt bring him into memory. The word remember there means thou shalt acknowledge the Lord thy God. To acknowledge means to place value and to place worth on a person. To acknowledge does not mean to barely recognize presence. Don't add God among the many equations of your success and push him into one of, no. Except the Lord builds a house, 
they labor in vain they will labor but it's in vain that build it it's like except the lord watches over a city the watchmen watch it but in vain he said it is vain to wake up early in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep as we prepare to receive further in the course of this conference it is important that our hearts be inclined to understand that number one multiplication is God's desire for me multiplication is God's desire for you do not let people preach you into a life of mediocrity and stagnation as a way of communicating spirituality everything that is alive grows stagnation is proof of death whatever it is that God gives you should grow your finances should grow your influence should grow your wisdom should grow your access should grow are we together your relationship should expand that is proof that the blessing is upon you however take note of the side effect the human nature craves number one to be complacent over the principles that take you like like an elevator lifts a man from ground floor to the highest floor there are principles that take men from where they are to the place of destiny he's saying that these principles are not only responsible for lifting they are responsible for maintenance if they lift you they keep you and number two the tendency to want to receive self-glorification in truth when God lifts you you will be honored it says the hour has come John 17 and verse 1 he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said the hour has come glorify now thy son that thy son will bring you glory the glory of God is in the glory of the saints so you will be lifted you will become an inspiration to many and you will influence many but you must be wise enough to become like an usher who can direct men and say there is nothing i can do by my strength in as much as god has given me wisdom he has given me insight i confess that if it had not been the lord who had been by my side you must unashamedly let men see that jesus is the doer that jesus is the lifter and can I tell you this? You've heard my teachings. Years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, Son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Please rise up on your feet. Just two prayer points very quickly. Prayer point number one. I obtain grace for multiplication. Even in this season, go ahead and pray. Is someone praying? Lift your voice and begin to pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. I obtain grace, the grace that multiplies. Someone is praying. Shake a paracato sadebeke rebada catalabasia. Shkele barunta scadabrate ketebeleketa. Shele baruska de baliata. And he blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, be fruitful, multiply, replenish subdue have dominion have dominion lift your voice and pray last prayer point you are going to pray father as you lift me the grace to walk in keeping with the principles that took me there and then number two the grace to acknowledge you in the midst of my success in the midst of my result the grace to tell the world you are the doer i resist the temptation of the flesh that derives glory in self-glorification lift your voice and pray is someone praying is someone praying Someone pray. If someone pray, lift your voice and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. 
for the glory to the now wait a minute I said to him before where the singing was going on I hate accolades I said look at me the dress we are wearing is Jesus I touch his flesh this flesh is Jesus I said my little girl beside you there is Jesus everything about you everything about me everything about every one of us is Jesus at work and so whatever we get done whatever we see done in our life the glory must go to him and I caught that message when I was coming in also that beware of misplacement of the glory give it to one to whom it belongs can I have the praise team lead us for the glory must be to the Lord this building is Jesus the cost is Jesus the payment of the bills is Jesus the ones who came and walked there is Jesus let's ascribe the glory to him on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory, All the glory must be to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this magnificent facility will return the glory to you. For the speed of construction and completion will return the glory to you. For paying all the bees of this construction, we say thank you. And we are here to hand over this to you today. Let it remain a home of salvation Amen. a home of deliverance Amen. a home of breakthroughs Amen. as the name of this ministry sounds a platform for global impact Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. now bless of all, all of us who are here today and at the end of the day receive all the glory Amen. in Jesus precious name we have prayed Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be comfortably seated. The theme of the conference that culminated in this dedication today is uh, caption, recharge. Okay. No one's battery here will go flat. Amen. You will remain on the highway of life. Amen. There shall be no breakdown. Amen. Let me share this thought with you before we go into this dedication session. There are no ceilings on the destiny of God's people. The path of the justified is ordained to be as a shining light that shines more and more and more and more until the perfect day, the day that Jesus returns. So we have a destiny of no limits in Christ. That's to say, wherever you are now is the least place you will ever be. Yeah. 
Every child of God possesses a greater potential in redemption than all the Old Testament saints in Scripture. So, every one of us in this house, everyone redeemed by the blood, carries greater potentials in redemption than Abraham, than Isaac, than Joseph, than Daniel, than Gideon, than Job, name it. That's the whole episode of Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, 13. That tells you how elastic our destiny in redemption is, both as individuals and as ministries. I kept telling my son, this is not the last thing you are going to build. <laughs> you are too young to have the last at this time. Of all born of women, there is none as great as John the Baptist, for he that is least in the kingdom, greater than he. Matthew 11, 11. That is saying that you carry much more than all those giants in the Old Testament carry. But this destiny is unveiled only as far as your eyes can see. Genesis 13 and verse 14 and 15. Lift up now your eyes and look northwards and southwards, eastwards and westwards for all the land. We thou seest unto you will I give it. So you've got to see it first before you can assess it. You've got to see before you can take delivery of it. So how far we see is what the time is, how far we ever go. Remember, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. They made a cause for us, for his written cause, everyone that hanged upon the tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come unto us who are Gentiles and might obtain the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, we have access to the same order of blessings that Abraham carried in redemption. And that demands that as far as your eyes can see, Unto you will God give it. May the eyes of all be open today. Amen. To see far beyond where you are today from the word of God. Amen. And learn how to, to get there. You will get there. Can I show you this? If you will diligently hearken to my voice. And observe to do what I command you to do. That I, the Lord your God, will set thee on high above all nations. Not some nations. Not most nations. About, above all nations of the earth. That again shows how elastic our destiny and redemption is. Above all nations of the earth. Interestingly, God delivers his plan and purpose to us little by little. So it takes patience. The patience of faith to fully realize God's ultimate agenda for our lives in our walk with him. Exodus 23 verse 20 he gave them verse 30, sorry, little by a little, and by a little, and by a little. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 11, he gave them the promised land by a little, and by a little. We obviously have a destiny of no limit in Christ, but we, he said, whosoever believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works, my God, 
than these shall live be. Because I go to my father. John 14, 12. That's how elastic our destiny and redemption is. Doing the works that he did and greater than he did. He said it with his mouth. If you will believe. And interestingly, nobody ever doubts what you can see. If you can see it, believing it is natural. You can't be confused. I'm not wearing a suit here now. Why? You can see it. And I'm not wearing black. Why? You can see it. No one has problem believing what he can see. And what revelation is all about is being able to see what God is saying. So men of revelation don't struggle with faith. They can see it. So believing it is natural. <laughs> we cannot but speak those things we have heard and we have seen. Doubt dies when you are able to catch what God is saying with your sight. Even Thomas, my Lord and my God, when he saw him, his doubt gave way. All of my privileged proteges heard me say, I'm not surprised that we're where we are. Blessed be God for making it happen. But I would have been surprised if we are not there. Why I could see it far ahead of time. I could see it far ahead of time. My prayer is that everyone's eyes shall be specially open today. To see far beyond where you are. Yeah. And take covenant responsibility on how to get there. Yeah. It's bound to happen. For example, every child of God has an enviable destiny. In redemption. We brethren, as Isaac, are children of promise. Galatians 8, I mean 4.28. And Isaac went forward, worked strong, became very great, and the Philistines envied him. The nation went to him and said, Thou art mightier than us. So men mightier than nations will start rising in the body of Christ. So you don't have a pitiable destiny. You have an enviable destiny in Christ. Whatever connotes pity around your life is converted to envy today. Yeah. Never mind where you may have been. When Saul came into the midst of the prophets, he began to prophesy. You have come to the midst of those who can see. Your eyes must open today. Yeah. Your eyes must open today. Amen. Your eyes must open today. Amen. Your eyes must open today. Amen. We ran a master class at the African Development Center at the university, and I uh, did one of those classes, uh, which was in line with what uh, Apostle Godman said. You know, I told him I've been seeing men of God. He's the first God man I met in my life. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So, uh, if God man were not here, would I be here? <laughs> no, he also knows. <laughs> Praise God. I said there is a place for you in space. All you need to learn is how to fly your spacecraft. There's a place for you there. And that the atmosphere is filled with billions of birds, yet they have not been able to shield the sun from shining to show how much space there is for anybody. Well, the good news is you'll never be granted anymore in your life. We all have a mountaintop destiny in Christ. 
as we keep walking in obedience to God's commandments. Our city is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Just obey me and I'll take you there. That's the word. Just obey me and I'll take you there. If you will diligently hearken to my voice, observe to do what I command you, I will take you to the topmost top of the mountain. Above all nations of the earth. God has not changed. He's changing your level today. The question is, what makes now every Israelite is likened to an ego, which implies that every believer is redeemed to soar. Where are the sweat? To soar where others sweat. To have this analogy in this room, chapter 32 and verse 9 to 14. And he showed us the secret in there. The Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. So as you let God keep leading you, He'll be leading you from one level of glory to another. Please, learn what it takes. Instead of breaking our heads in prayers and fasting, learn what it takes and line up with it. He said, Israel is the lost portion. He found him in a desert, in a howling wilderness, nothing working. He led him about as an eagle. He instructed him, he kept him at the top of his eye. The Lord alone did lead him, there was no strange God with him. He made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinting rock and got him to ride upon his high places. The Lord alone did lead him. May I say this to all ministers who are here? Allow God to lead you. Allow God to lead you. Don't be led by the environment. Allow the Lord to lead you. He never leads backward. He always leads forward. Allow God to lead you. And you'll be surprised how quickly he brings his word to pass in your life. Therefore, following God's leading is a vital key to arriving at the fullness of his plan and purpose for our life. Following his leading. Thou shalt not go down to Egypt. Simple instruction to Isaac. Dwell in the land that I tell you of. He stayed in there. And he sowed in that land and in that year. He lived a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him. He went forward. He worked strong. He became very great. And the Philistines emptied. One year of massive turnaround. By walking after the leading of the Lord. That's the way there, and you will get there. As we keep following, God will keep making. Follow me, and I will make you what I've ordained you to be. Just follow me. All you need is follow me. Leave me to your making. Keep following, I will keep making. Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. Keep following, and I will keep making. As we keep following, God keeps advancing us. Allow him to shepherd your life. You keep going forward and never backward. Keep following, and God will keep enlarging you, taking you from level to level as you keep following. Remember, I am the Lord that leads you in the way that thou shouldest go I am the Lord that teaches thee to prosper. The Lord said to me, October 1, 1983, I'm committed to leading you if you are committed to following me. And I tell you, he's been leading me about. 
year after year, but has never led me backward. Most of the leaders don't appear to add up. No. They look weighed, as if you lost your mind. But if it's the law leading, it's leading you forward and not backward. It's ever leading his people forward. What shall we do? Pharaoh's army behind, the rest in front, go forward. I don't live backward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. From now, that shall be your new identity. As we keep following, it keeps changing our levels from one realm of glory to another. Keep following. And it will keep changing your level from one realm of glory to another. God will not stop making us until we stop following him. Now here is it. The meek only will he guide in judgment. You already know where you are going, so go ahead and back up yourself. But the meek will he teach in the way that she shall choose. It takes meekness to subscribe to his leading. It takes meekness to su subscribe to his leading. It takes meekness to subscribe to his leading. No wonder the Bible said, blessed are the meek. For they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, because they, are, they have subscribed fully to the leading of the law from state to state in their life. And it keeps enlarging them. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. They shall inherit the earth. They shall inherit the earth. Well, that appears, therefore, as the key to your continuous and unending enlargement. My prayer is that this charge, in addition to all that God has been speaking to you since this conference began, we change your story forever. <laughs> Beware of the Laodicean syndrome. I'm rich. I've need for nothing. Not knowing that you are poor and wretched and blind. If you know where God is taking you, you know that we are nowhere yet. You are nowhere yet. You are nowhere yet. If you can only spy into where God is taking you, you know you are nowhere yet. Let me conclude this charge from that Revelation chapter 3 and verse 18. Beware of the Laodicean syndrome. Beware the Laodicean syndrome. He said, because thou seest, I am rich. I've, I'm increased with goods and have need of nothing. And know it not that thou art wretched compared to where I'm taking you. I'm miserable. I'm poor. I'm blind. I'm naked. Then verse 18. He said, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich. And white raiment that thou may be clothed, and at the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salves that thou may see. God is taking you somewhere. God is taking you somewhere. May the eyes of understanding of every one of us here today be opened afresh. To see the weight of glory that awaits you in God's master plan. And may you receive grace to walk with meekness and be guided by him all the days of your life. Amen. Lift up your right hand, everyone, and give God thanks for recharging you in the race of life. For showing you that thank God for where you are is taking you somewhere else. And you are bound together. 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 And you will get there.
Now, why this dedication service? Giving God all the glory is gateway to going from glory to glory in ministry. We believe, we know that Jesus did it and is waiting to be acknowledged. And so this service is put together to acknowledge him as the one behind all that we are saying today. Can I hear your amen? amen. For except the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain that builds it. Except the, watch, the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen are awake but in vain. It's in vain you get up early in the morning and go to bed late in the night, eating the bread of sorrow, for so he gives his beloved sleep. This is the doing of the Lord and his marvelous in our eyes, and we're here to say thank you, Jesus. Remember about that by strength shall no man prevail. So we are not here by reason of strength, skill, or expertise. It is just the grace of election that we are celebrating. Behind the happening today is the grace of election upon his servant. Walking through him. Walking behind the scene. To produce what we are looking at today. We must therefore continue to give God the glory to preserve his blessings in our lives. This commandment to you, ye priests, if you know here, and lay to her to give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will cause your blessings. He said, Yea, I've caused them already because you did not lay it to her. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 1 to 3. This commandment is to you, O ye priests. O ye priests, as they are applauding you and clapping, recognize this is not me. I'm only fronting for the builder. I'm only fronting for the builder. And then the blessings are preserved. The blessing of today will never know a reversal. Yeah. This building will not suffer any form of mishap. Yeah. Fire shall not go off this building. Yeah. Robber shall not know the way this building is. Yeah. Evil shall not penetrate here yeah. because we are handing over to the owner. And there is no rabbit's dog that will say who is a lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah will be resident here permanently. And so every wild beast will keep off. Every evil beast will keep off. We must continue to give God the glory for the perfection of our blessings. That one leper returned, Luke 17, 17 to 19, and with a loud voice glorify God. And he said, well, thou art made whole. The others were cleansed, he was the only one made whole. His clipped fingers were straightened back. His contoured faces were smoothing out. Because he returned to give God the glory, he perfected his blessings. As we give God the glory today, he will perfect his blessings in this ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Psalm 138 and verse 8, the Lord will perfect all things that concerns me. Finally, but thoughtly, we give him the glory to multiply his blessings in our life. Jesus took the five loaves and two fishes and gave thanks, and it multiplied supernaturally. 5,000 men, minus women and children were fed as much as they would, and they still gathered 12 baskets of remnants, fragments, to show the reality of the multiplication. So, where we are today is the least place that this ministry will ever be. Amen. There shall be the multiplication of his grace for impact, for enlargement, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, please note, every good gift and every perfect gift, so he doesn't give perfect first. He gives good first. You acknowledge him for it, he upgrades it. You acknowledge for him, he upgrades it. Until he gets to the perfect. Every time you glorify him, he changes your story. Changes your level. And that's what you are going to be experiencing from here. Yeah. 
never assume it. To take God for granted is to be granted. Never assume his blessings. Never say God knows that I'm giving him glory, give him glory. Give him glory genuinely, practically, not theoretically. Now, that's James chapter 1 verse 17. Now in Romans chapter 8 and chapter 12 verse 2, it talks about to know that which is the will of God, the good, the acceptable, and the perfect. Good, acceptable, and perfect. So it moves you from good to very good, and from very good to excellent. It doesn't rush it at you at a time, so you don't crash under the weight of it. It takes you level by level. How much we acknowledge him from where we are, the time is where next will take us. And how much acknowledging for where we find ourselves, the time is where else it will take us. My prayer is that you never assume God's blessings anymore. And no one here among us, ministers, business people, will ever assume the blessings of God as a product of your expertise or skill or strength or connection. And I can tell you, it will never stop lifting you. That's the thing. Simple, simple instruction. Opening great doors to people's lives. Simple, simple instruction. When we concluded his agenda of building the faith tabernacle in one year, I told our pastors, I said, if anybody went around this building and said, we built it, God will kill him. God will kill him because we had no capacity. We had no practical resources. We didn't have the speed or the time in our hand. He just stepped in and took it all over. Stepped in and, and then to now assume that we did it. My God, you provoke his wrong. He said, no, but the same day, the same day, I, because I felt some folk can be saying, no, see what you have done. You haven't done anything. Don't let God catch you saying we have done something. Praise God. And that's what moves the people forward. Acknowledging God for his acts genuinely, heartily, not for people to hear you, but it's inside you. I still know till tomorrow that if I were not here, if I'd gone to heaven, nothing happening in that ministry would drop. Nothing. The one at work resides there permanently. And so I'm only privileged to be around while he's doing it. I'm not the architect. I'm not the one in charge. I'm not the supplier. He is. The moment you throw yourself in acknowledging him, there is no limit where we take you. Just connect with that genuinely. Connect with it, you know, tirelessly. Don't ever, at any time, get somewhere where you say, we did. No. It's not safe. It's not safe. It's not safe. Thank you, Jesus. You are going places. Oh. You are going places. You are going places. Well, we are here today to give all the glory to the builder of his church. His name, Jesus Christ. Help me give him a big hand of praise. As this sanctuary is being dedicated today, God's presence shall ever abide here. His eyes shall ever be upon this sanctuary. Amen. Day and night. And his glory shall continually fill this house. Everyone that steps in here week after week, we have an encounter with the living Christ. Amen. Every unsafe soul that steps in here, we find salvation. Amen. Every child of God that gets in here, we have their needs met. Amen. Every member of this church will start going forward. As God has changed the story of this church, so will it be changing your own story. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, in 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and verse 20 and 21. 2 Chronicles 6, 20 and 21. Solomon prays saying that thy eyes may be open upon this house day and night. Upon the place... We are off, thou hast said, 
thou wouldest put my name there to hearken unto the prayer with thy servant prayed towards this place. And verse 21. Hearken therefore unto the supplication of thy servant and of thy people Israel, which they make towards this house. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. This house shall be a house of prayer. Yeah. Answers to prayer will be natural in this place. Yeah. People enter here and call on God, He will answer them by fire. Yeah. And so shall it be. That's the business we are here to do. And according to scriptures, we'll be anointing this sanctuary and handing it over to the one that owns it. Amen. And from this time onward, we only have an identity. The name of the church, the one that owns it, is Jesus. And everyone that steps in here, we find him here. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. When the mystery of the anointing was being unveiled by God, he said in that Deuteronomy chapter, I mean, Exodus 30, verse 26 to 29, Thou shalt anoint the tabernacle. Thou shalt anoint the tabernacle. And all the vessels of service, that they may be most holy. Whosoever touches them shall be holy. So the anointing is to separate anything to God. So as we anoint this place today, it is separated to God. And this altar shall remain an altar of fire. Every defilement will be turned to chaff. And the fire of the Lord from this altar will burn them off. Yeah. Everyone in this house will not, not only have impact on earth, everyone will make heaven at the end. Yeah. No one will miss his place in eternity. Yeah. The fire of the word of God will keep everybody jumping after God for life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we all rise, please? Give the Lord the biggest hand of praise. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your two hands to heaven, everyone. Again, no assumption. Let's return the glory to him for giving us this beautiful facility in this place and in this ministry. Let's give him thanks. This is the doing of the Lord and it's marvelous in our eyes. Lift up those two hands. And give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. Give the Lord praise. And give the Lord praise. And give the Lord praise. In Jesus' precious name.
him we have given thanks. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Now, we're going to praise him for a moment while we get ready to anoint this tabernacle and all the gates that lead into this sanctuary. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody excited? Somebody excited? One of the ways to acknowledge God is to give him praise. Hallelujah. And we're going to praise him dancing and celebrating his faithfulness over this ministry over the years. Somebody agree with that? Come on, give the Lord praise. So lead us in singing danceable songs unto the Lord. Hallelujah. See what you've done for us, oh. See how you change our story. You are the living God, oh. Yes, yes. Let's go, 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 let's go
Jesus, everlasting Father, the beginning and the end, most and the last, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, you are holy, you are precious, you are beautiful, you are wonderful, we see your hand, we see your hand, we see your hand. The sound of joy will never depart from this house. And the sound of joy will never depart from your house. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Right now, we are going to be blessing the oil, and it shall be turned to the holy anointing oil, and we shall be dedicating this sanctuary accordingly. The six gates that lead to this room, this sanctuary will be anointed, and there shall be continuous influx of souls. Amen. Services will keep multiplying. Amen. The multitudes will keep multiplying. Amen. Everyone shall be finding their needs met by Christ. The word of God will keep flourishing here. Amen. There will be no down time in this church. Amen. There shall be no dry season in this church. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. All the men of God that are supposed to be helping us in approaching these gates, should please march, step forward here. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. According to the word, thou shalt anoint the tabernacle and the vessels of service, that they may be most holy, whoever touches them shall be holy. Therefore, the content of these vessels in your hand is declared today the holy anointing oil. And as these gates are anointed in the name of Jesus, the gates are declared open night and day for influx of souls, not just into this church, but into the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, every sick soul that passes through this gate shall find healing. Every afflicted that passes through this gate shall find liberty. Everyone that enters this sanctuary shall meet with Christ. Amen. Every problem that enters this sanctuary shall return with solution. Amen. Every triad that steps in here shall return as testimonies. Amen. Every burden that came along with people into this service shall return as a testimony. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and so shall it be. Amen. Not only when service is going on, Whatever time anybody steps in here, he will meet with Christ. Yeah. Every word from this altar will release fire. Yeah. The fire that defines, the fire that destroys the works of the wicked, the fire that secures destiny. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is declared the holy anointing oil. This is declared the holy anointing oil. This is declared the holy anointing oil in the name of Jesus Christ. Please go to the video's gate where we begin to celebrate God as they do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shall we keep praising him? In a the moment, they will soon be back here. Go ahead. You are the reason why I lift my hands. shall anoint Aaron and his sons that they may minister to me in the priest's office. So we use you as point of contact for all the men and women that stand with you in ministering on the altar to the people. The oil that comes on your head will go down your beard and come down to your garments and get down to your foot. Everyone that is part of this ministry will draw from that unction. Amen. Amen. Now look up here. Everything produces after its kind. That's the word from God. Every tree, every living creature, they all produce after their kind. By the anointing today, I see you producing in greater dimension after your root. 
in the name of Jesus. Now watch. He again came down with the word of faith and moved the church of Christ into another level. I followed him so hard till I took the mantle from him. And the word of faith is enlightening the entire world today as God is releasing his word through his servant. I've not had one problem believing anything. No. And I've not had to doubt in the course of pursuing anything God says. Because of that mantle. Now today, I decree a fresh endowment of the spirit of faith that will keep moving you from level to level. And for all ministers who are here, I decree that to partake of that same release in the name of Jesus. If you walk down to Canaan land, you used to the place, the first gate when you leave the university chapel was our boundary. It was built with concrete. The fence was concrete. And then the Lord said to me, go and acquire more. And from there, over 9,000 acres were acquired. That is not even looking enough now. <laughs> now watch. You are not ending here. You will soon be telling the story when we were dedicating that little sanctuary. That shall be your testimony. You know why I said there are no ceilings? God told me about 50,000 seed sanctuary, 1982. He did it in one year without begging him to do it. He flagged it for by himself. He did. Now he said, now go ahead. How? Go ahead. And you know what's going on now? Now, there is no end to enlightenment in God's agenda. I therefore pray that the meekness required to still keep safe as God keep enlarging you, receive it right now. Yeah. And for all ministers who are here, the meekness required to keep enjoying God's greatness from level to level, receive it right now. Yeah. Now, as this oil comes on your head, I decree fresh release of grace Amen. from level to level Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now begin to produce after your roots Amen. in greater dimensions Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. New fire on the altar. Amen. New insight in the word of God. Amen. New order of proofs in your life. New order of testimonies from the altar in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I ask for this grace to be extended to everyone that is sent to join you in ministering to God's people here. Every pastor, every minister, I decree the release of this grace to flow down to them wherever they are in the name of Jesus Christ. And for the entire membership of this church and the multitude that are coming to join in the name of Jesus, the grace of today we keep speaking in their lives. This ministry shall never suffer a setback. You'll never know a downward trend. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look up here. In 40 years, we have never known a setback. Now, the next 40 years of your life and ministry you never suffer a setback. Yeah. Look up here. I have never been a victim of distraction. In 40 years, I've stayed focused by grace on his assignment on my life. Grace to stay focused because only focused people become first class citizens of the earth. Grace to stay focused. Paul said, this one thing I do Grace to stay focused. Jesus said to this end, was I born? Grace to stay focused. Receive it today in the name of Jesus. Amen. This altar shall not be messed up. Amen. This altar shall not be defied. Amen. 
you are preaching the truth today, you will not preach lies tomorrow. Yeah. Doctrines of devils will not find their way here. Yeah. You will lead this congregation with you to heaven. Yeah. None shall drop off on the way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now receive wisdom to manage Amen. the continuous growth of this church. Amen. Receive wisdom Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. 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 Amen. Well, to everyone that is here, help me congratulate Jesus for what he has done. Congratulate Jesus for what he has done. Now, wait a minute. I didn't shout. I say, Jesus, congratulations. Lord Jesus, congratulations. Lord Jesus, congratulations. You have done it again. Congratulations. We are seeing it with our eyes. Congratulations. Lord Jesus, congratulations. Lord Jesus, now, join me congratulate this young man and this young lady for obeying God. Congratulate them for grace, of obedience, grace to serve God's purpose on the earth by the grace of election. Come on, let, let, me, let me hear you say, Pastor, congratulations. For allowing God to use you. Congratulations. For not receiving the grace of God in vain. Congratulations. Come and give the Lord a big hand of praise. Yes. Now this altar is declared an altar of fire. It's anointed today to keep emitting fire day and night. In the name of Jesus. Every word that emanates from this altar will be fire. Amen. Every declaration here will deliver as fire. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Give the Lord the biggest clap offering, everybody. Amen. Amen. And I say to all of us who are here, in partnership with Jesus, congratulations to you all. And that's what you'll be hearing all through your remaining days in life. One more time, give the Lord a big hand of praise. You are God.